Despite the fact that all our observations of the universe seem to be pointing towards dark matter outnumbering normal matter five to one, we still don't know what it's made of because we haven't directly detected it. Now, as much as us astrophysicists like to complain that the particle physicists are slacking with how long they're taking to figure out what it's made of or what particle it is, it's really difficult to search for it because we just don't know a lot about it. So from our observations of the universe, we do know that dark matter has to interact with gravity because we see its effects when there's no normal matter there. We also know that it doesn't interact with light, so it doesn't emit, reflect or absorb light. And we know it's very unlikely for dark matter to ever collide with itself. And I've made a video before on all the evidence we have for dark matter's existence and what we know about it if you want to check that out. But what we still don't know is how massive this mysterious dark matter particle might be or how likely it is to interact with other types of particles, which makes searching for it a bit like a shot in the dark. Particle physicists have done everything from building huge dark matter detectors underground where they're hoping like a dark matter particle will come in, hit into another particle and they'll be able to detect that change, to smashing particles together in huge underground particle accelerators like at CERN in Switzerland in the hope of creating some dark matter particles. But what if I said that we could use Jupiter, the planet, to detect dark matter. That's what this paper published by Blanco and Leanne this month tried to do by detecting something known as trihydrogen cation or H3+. And it definitely got some heads turning. So in this video we're going to chat first about what are trihydrogen cations, second what they've got to do with Jupiter and dark matter, Third, how much of this trihydrogen cation Blanco and Liam found on Jupiter. And finally, what this tells us about the nature of dark matter. But before we dive into all of that, if you see a news story like this online, how do you know what you're reading or you're watching is actually reliable? Especially with something like dark matter where there's so much misinformation out there. Well, I think one of the best ways of navigating this is to use Ground News, who are the sponsor of today's video. For example, I found this story on gravity without mass being a possible new explanation for the failure to find dark matter. Where I think Ground News really shines though is how you can compare the original research with how media outlets then interpret it. That's what's so great about this news platform. They show you all the world's media just in one convenient place. It's the brainchild of ex-NASA engineer Harleen Kaur, who worked on the Pluto-bound spacecraft New Horizons amongst other things, so you know that you're guaranteed to not only get a comprehensive, data-driven overview on all things space and science, but news on any topic that you're interested in. By far my favourite feature of theirs is their blind spot feed, so my vantage plan lets me easily see which narratives have little to no reporting on either side of the political spectrum, and that allows me to just, you know, step out of my echo chamber and just understand the bigger picture of issues impacting our world today. So I'm really glad to be partnering with ground news again especially because they are completely subscriber funded there is no ads on the platform which means they're free of all the biases that come with paid advertising as well so if you head to the link in the video description below at ground.news slash dr becky or you can scan the qr code up here and you'll get 40 percent off their vantage plan to get you unlimited access to all of their features so thanks again to ground news for sponsoring this video and now let's dive into this study by blanco and leanne and chat first about what even is a trihydrogen cation? Well, the trihydrogen bit means you've just got three hydrogen atoms. So a single hydrogen atom is just a positively charged proton at the center with a negatively charged electron in orbit around it. So what you've got here is three hydrogen atoms that are all bonded together into a single molecule. But the cation bit means that it is a positively charged molecule. So one of the electrons is actually missing. You've got three protons bonded together, sharing just two electrons. And despite the fact that you might never have heard of trihydrogen cations, it is one of the most abundant molecules in the entire universe. It is incredibly stable at low temperatures and low densities with that triangle-shaped bond, which means in the space between stars, what we call the interstellar medium, it is absolutely rife. 
Now, usually how you find hydrogen atoms, especially in this sort of gas between stars, is what we call molecular hydrogen, H2. So two molecules of hydrogen bonded together, two protons, two electrons. It's incredibly, incredibly stable, and it's also what stars form from. But if something really high energy hits into a hydrogen molecule, like a cosmic ray from a supernova, it can ionize it, i.e. free one of the electrons and form a dihydrogen cation, aka two atoms of hydrogen, a normal H2, but positively charged. It's lost an electron. But that dihydrogen cation is most likely very near another normal H2 molecule of hydrogen, which it reacts with and forms trihydrogen cation, which is sometimes also called protonated molecular hydrogen, because another way of thinking of it is that you've just taken normal H2 and you've just added a proton in there as well. Protonated molecular hydrogen. So that brings me to what on earth does this have to do with Jupiter and dark matter? Well, it's not just cosmic rays that can trigger this reaction and ionize molecular hydrogen, produce that dihydrogen cation, which then you need in the reaction to make a trihydrogen cation. It's any high energy process, so any extreme ultraviolet light from stars or even lightning in a planet's atmosphere or high energy electrons that are burped up by a star and then accelerated by a planet's magnetic field down to the poles where they impact with other molecules and make them glow to produce an aurora, what we call on Earth the northern and southern lights. Of course, you're much more likely to make trihydrogen cation in a planet's atmosphere that has a lot of molecular hydrogen, H2, to start with. Things like the gas giants of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So the amount of trihydrogen cations in the gas giant atmospheres has been extensively studied in the past because luckily for us, they give out infrared light and from the amount of infrared light we detect, we can work out, okay, how many of these trihydrogen cations are there in this planet's atmosphere. And what Blanco and Leanne pointed out is that there could be another way that trihydrogen cations could form in a gas giant's atmosphere. And that is if two dark matter particles collided in a planet's atmosphere and destroyed each other, something known as annihilation. That would give out a huge amount of energy, which then would be enough to ionize an H2 molecule, which then reacts with another H2 molecule to make trihydrogen cations. And that's great and all, but then how do you separate out trihydrogen cations formed by aurora versus by any dark matter annihilation that might be going on? Well, this is what Blanco and Leanne claimed that you could do on Jupiter, at least if you look in the right place. Because most trihydrogen cations on Jupiter are formed by the same high energy particles producing the aurora. So they'll all be up near the poles of Jupiter because they're funneled there by Jupiter's magnetic field. Then there'll also be a load of trihydrogen cations formed from high energy UV light from the sun, which will all be on the day side of Jupiter, so the side facing the sun. So Blanco and Leanne said, well, let's look for trihydrogen cations on the night side of Jupiter, facing away from the sun, specifically in the regions near the equator, away from the aurora at the poles. If we find a signal, that means that dark matter annihilation must be able to produce enough energy to give us trihydrogen cations that we can detect at those latitudes, because we don't really know any other source that could produce them there on Jupiter. Now, the problem with studying Jupiter's night side is that it's always facing away from the sun. And if you think about where Earth is <laughs> from Jupiter's perspective in relation to the sun, it is also towards the sun. So every time we look at Jupiter with a telescope, we're looking at its day side, the side that is lit by the sun. So we can't just take a telescope here on Earth, like an infrared telescope, like, for example, up on Mauna Kea, the Keck telescopes, or even the James Webb Space Telescope. We can't just take those telescopes and point it at Jupiter and observe the night side because it is always facing away from us. Luckily for us, though, the Cassini spacecraft had the kit on board to be able to detect the infrared light from trihydrogen cations when it flew past Jupiter all the way back in December 2000. It actually collected the data that Blanco and Leanne needed to do this test back then. So it was in the wavelength region of around about three to five microns. And it was Stallard and collaborators that published a detailed study on the emission from trihydrogen cations back in 2015. 
but they reported that they did not detect any infrared emission from trihydrogen cations on the night side of Jupiter near the equator. It was a complete non-detection. They didn't find anything there. So you might be thinking, well, if Blank One Leon had this idea and then they went and looked at the data and were like, oh, there's nothing there, why did they even write this paper then? Which brings me to, can this non-detection even tell us anything about dark matter? Well, Blanco and Leanne point out if there was only a small number of trihydrogen cations, then they wouldn't be giving out that much light and it would be too faint for Cassini to detect. We know the sensitivity of Cassini's instruments, so we can work out almost like, okay, what is the upper limit, the amount of trihydrogen cations you could have that were there giving out light but would still be too faint for Cassini and so would go undetected? then from that limit, you can then work out, okay, well then how much energy would be needed to produce that many trihydrogen cations? And then you can link that back to the models of, okay, how much energy would a dark matter particle, like two dark matter particles coming in and annihilating give off? How much energy you get from that depends on the mass of the dark matter particle. Because remember, Einstein's most famous equation E equals mc squared. Energy and mass are the same thing. But it's not just mass that that annihilation depends on. It also depends on something called the cross section, which is how likely it is that two dark matter particles will even collide to annihilate. So from that upper limit of how many trihydrogen cations could go undetected, we can put limits on a dark matter particle's mass and its cross section, which is what is shown here. Basically anything in the gray shaded region has been ruled out by this non-detection in the Cassini data. So to put it another way, whatever particle dark matter is made of, it can't have those properties in the gray region. And the yellow shaded region there on the edge is sort of the region they're a bit more uncertain about because their limits also have some uncertainty on them. So although Stallard and collaborators reported a non-detection of trihydrogen cations on the night side of Jupiter, Blanco and Leanne pointed out that it still tells us something about the nature of dark matter, if it is even a particle anyway. And it should help particle physicists narrow down their searches in the hope of finally figuring out what dark matter is made of. This mysterious dark mark, dark mark, dark matter particle. <laughs> dark mark, just like, <laughs> press it and dark matter will come running to do this test. Somewhere in the rave, and rave, rave region. So from that upper limit of how many trihydrogen tri ions, blah, 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 blah. H2 is one thing, H3 plus another. I beg you, don't ionize me, little sucker. I